Hi, welcome to the bathtub. This is the, uh, the bathtub lockdown, the quarantine lockdown edition of the bathtub. It's also the quarantine haircut edition. This is my quarantine haircut. My wife gave it to me. She used the dog clippers. And I, I don't know, I, you know, it's not any worse. It doesn't look worse than any of my normal haircuts. So we'll get rid of this. We're, we're, uh, what, what exciting things are happening here? This is the bathtub where, uh, where we've, been quarant we've been in quarantine basically since we were old enough to bathe. That's 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 my new motto for the show, and uh, we're in the second. This is our second top ten list of great short story collections. So if you missed the first one last last few days ago, ago, is that basically as I started to do these top ten lists, which are just totally bullshit anyway, right? You can't quantify or measure all these stories, but every time I would do it, I would come up with a different top ten list, different number ones, different number ten. I mean, there was no way of actually rating any of these. So I basically I'm going to keep doing top ten lists of of great short story collections until I run out of them. So that's the premise of this. I have to, There's just so many great short story writers, and I, I don't even know if I could do this in three episodes, frankly. But today we're going to do a top ten list of writers we didn't do in the last one. And the, the other central premise is that we're not just, they're not really the great collection. There's collections by writers who have written lots of great collections. So, for example, number ten. I've got the whiteboard out. I'll try to remember to bring it out at the end because I, I got lots of people upset that the, the whiteboard was missing. John Sloddick is number 10. You don't know who John Sloddick is, probably. He's a, he was a buddy of Tom Dish. They wrote a funny book together, several funny books together. He wrote lots and lots of short stories. He is fucking hilarious. I just picked two off the shelves. One is called The Steam Driven Boy, which which is fit, which has... Kind of a, was notorious at the time. I remember friends and I used to read these out loud to each other and laugh our heads off, which is filled with uh, uh, pastiches of famous writers, such as J.G. Ballard, Philip K. Dick, Arthur C. Clarke. And the guy, he really had a great ear for their the styles, and, and, and he, they're just hilarious. And then there's other stories. He did lots of takeoffs on mysteries. So the opening story is called The Secret of the Old Custard. I don't even remember what the story meant. I just used to laugh out loud at his stories. I think he's funnier than Vonnegut. I'm going to pick this one, Alien Accounts, which there's probably only the, this old this old Granada edition from the UK. I don't think it came out in America. And I, all his collections are worth getting, so any collection you get of his is worth getting. But I picked this one because it has Masterson and the Clerks, which I remember reading when I was 14 or 15 and just pissing myself laughing. It was just It was a takeoff on the nightmares of being working in a a corporate office and you know automated office and you know it's 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 player piano ten times funnier. I, I think John Slotic just always really made me laugh. So it's number ten. So the premise is that either of these would count as our number ten collection, but any any single author collection by Slotic is worth getting. And ideally not the best of because those best ofs leave out all these wonderful stories. And I would do that one. So number nine. Okay, we did 10, 10 people last week, and we left Joyce Carol Oates out. We've done a whole episode on Joyce Carol Oates. Basically, she's a huge, she's a walking quandary, a very thin walking quandary of what the hell books to keep of hers and what not to. I find that every one of her short story collections I've enjoyed. I've never read a bad short story collection by Oates, and yet many of her novels just exhaust the hell out of me, especially the long ones. I'm fond of... I tend to like darker stories, and Collector of Hearts and another one called Haunted have a lot of her kind of more quasi-horror stories and sometimes authentic horror stories or fantasy stories. I really like this one. I've used this in class, this book, and I've used Haunted in class. And I, if you were going to try a Joyce Carol Oates collection, I'd try this. Many, All her story, every individual single author collection of hers, I've enjoyed. And many of them are much more kind of, you know, slightly more domestic realism. She tends to deal with her, her favorite subject is women, is, is kind of uh, women being uh, manipulated by, by powerful men. That's kind of the thing she, she does over and over again. And she does it really well. Number eight. So we haven't even touched all these writers. Robert Eichmann. 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 I never read Robert Eichmann. I've heard of him for years. I did a whole, we've done at least one episode, maybe two episodes. I've written an essay on him in the past couple of years for The Baffler. Robert Aikman is impossible to categorize. He's, uh, 
I missed a whole lot of great fiction because I didn't think of read anything that was quali- that classified a horror fiction. And Robert Aikman is one of the ones that I kind of just never got to over the years. I love his stories. You can't categorize them as anything. They tend to have dark and supernatural elements to them, but they're very different from your normal horror stories. Many of them are weird, just comic stories or strange fantasies or possibly fantasy stories. Um, I'm, I'm picking, again, single author collections. Any one of his single author collections is fantastic. Um, the Wine Dark Sea, I'm only picking this off the shelf. It's a hard one to pick, but it has two of my favorite stories. The Trains, which is one of his first stories, is this... It's a haunting story. I can't get it out of my head, especially the way he tells the story. And this also has, oh, this doesn't have the one I picked it because I, I thought it had the, uh, or it has the fetch. The fetch is maybe my, one of my two or three favorite ghost stories. What a brilliant ghost. That's a proper ghost story. It scared the piss out of you. It's beautiful. So anything he wrote is, is going to be great. Okay, you know, again, you know, we did 10. We didn't do Flannery O'Connor. I mean, you know, this th- these are impossible to do. Flannery O'Connor is one of the great short story writers this is one of those rare Library of Americas, which is nice to have because also because it has the collection she published in her life in the individual uh, table of contents of those original editions. I think that's great, including and that includes uncollected stories and her novels. Even if she only wrote A Good Man is Hard to Find, if you haven't read that short story, it's one of the all-time hilarious, dark comic stories. It's so funny and it's brilliant. You should read that. But all of his stories are pretty funny and dark and very well written, just just sculpted sentences, just beautiful paragraphs. So you can't miss with, with Flannery O'Connor. And any idiot who would do a top ten list, like I did, without Flannery O'Connor on it, is an idiot. So we have to keep doing these until we run out of people. Which brings us to, uh, again, six and five. I, you know... There's no point in trying to decide which is six and five. Truman Capote. Truman Capote is best known for um, Breakfast at Tiffany's, which is a great, this is a short story, basically, a really long story. It's a great story. And this is a nice little edition. It has two books, The Grass Harp, which is a short novel, and then his first collection of stories, which is called A Tree of Night and Other Stories. He was like 18 or 19, I think, when he wrote these. These are very much like Flannery O'Connor or Carson McCullers, sort of writers. He is one of the greatest short story writers of all time. He's best known for In Cold Blood. He shouldn't be. These stories are just brilliant. Very funny. Very dark. And if I had time, I would probably read you some of these opening sentences. Um, Okay, just the opening sentence of Children on Their Birthdays. This is the... This is the title. The title of the story is Children on Their Birthdays. you got to buy the book just for the title of that story. Yesterday afternoon, the 6 o'clock bus ran over Miss Bobbitt. It's just, every story has opening lines like that. Great, great, master misery. Again, often, they're they're often moving into kind of horror fantastic territories, and you never know where they're going to go. Okay, speaking of all these kind of dark, we're really kind of, this is the macabre, sec- the macabre episode of the top ten list. You know, what kind of idiot would do a top ten list without Shirley Jackson? I mean, he mu- I must have been an idiot last week. And I stand by the last ten, ten best short story collections. But still, how can you do it without Shirley Jackson? She's, she's as good as you are led to expect. Even if she only wrote The Lottery, which is one of those few classic stories, which is a fucking great story. <laughs> you know what I mean? Every time I read that story, it's just fucking great. And it's brilliant and surprising and funny. Um, all, most of her stories I've read, I have liked. They tend to be dark. They tend to be macabre. They, um, one Ordinary Day with Peanuts is one of my favorites. But, she, but I've never read a bad Shirley Jackson story. And she's... You know, there's a few of those high points. You just, how can you beat the lottery? But she wrote lots of wonderful stories and lots of really good novels as well. Okay, again, some idiot left John Collier off the short story collection last week. You know, I mean, in the middle of talking about the top ten list, you know, I look over, I see Fancies and Good Nights. This is one of my all-time favorite books. It's also, it also kind of contradicts my argument, which is go to the individual collections that the author put together in their lifetime, not the best of. 
This was a kind of late life, best of collection of John Collier's stories. Um, again, these are all, we've got a lot of kind of dark, kind of fantastic, macabre stories. And they're, they have kind of murders involved. Sometimes they're murder stories. Collier's stories are almost always four or five pages long. They're always funny. They're technically really, really sharp and bright. And he can do a story in two or three pages and just knock you out by the end of that story. If you haven't read John Collier, if you know Roald Dahl, Roald Dahl, to my mind, is very good. And I like his stuff a lot, but he's not as good. He's sort of in that territory of, of, of Roald Dahl, but he's much smarter, much brighter writer. He was a British writer. He was a British uh, citizen who moved to Hollywood middle mid of his life, wrote several novels, including Tom's A Cold. I showed you that kind of rare book I have, his post-apocalyptic novel, which almost nobody knows about. There's a new edition of this from New York Review of Books, but you really should get the old Bantam book. I'm sure it's not that expensive. I mean, you want it's, it should be mass market. He should be mass market paperbacks. Okay, John Collier. Some idiot left him off last time. One of my all-time favorites again. These are all writers who I go back to over and over. John Updike short stories. Um, I gotta have a have a Manhattan break. I'm I'm uh, I have a very simple argument on Updike, which is I think his career was kind of boring up through the '60s. I think Couples is boring. I hate Rabbit Run. I don't like most of his early novels and stories. And about this time, what year is this? This is the first time I bought a book of his, 87. And it just not and I just loved it. This is the first time I read one of his books and I really loved it all the way through. I always sort of thought, "Well, he's a very bright guy and I don't really like him." But with uh Trust Me, the short story collection, I sat down and read this as a no as I would read a novel, just one story after another, and each one was sharp and funny and really well written. And um, you know, he he started he started he started to seem more and more like Cheever, but a much sharper prose writer and really moving, funny stories. Um, I remember a, uh, he he did a bunch of these Beck books, which are based on a writer. Don't like those as much. Like m almost all of his novels and stories from about the eighties onward. Um, and uh, I would go for any of those collections. There's many, many of these I loved, particularly the last one, My Father's Tears, wonderful book of stories, after, published posthumously, and I would really strongly recommend it. Updike. You know, only an idiot could leave Isaac Dennison out of a top ten list of short story writers. I picked this one, Anecdotes of Destiny and Erin Guard. It's a short novel. It's a collection of her stories that she published in her lifetime. Her real name, her, she her, what was her real? I forget her real name was Karen Blixen. I can't remember which was the pseudonym. Anyway, she was she lived in uh, she, there was a movie, big Hollywood movie called Out of Africa, which I frankly never saw, but um, that was based on her her memoirs. She wrote amazingly beautiful, complex, longish stories. I like this one just because it com it contains two of my favorites, uh, Babette's Feast, which was actually made into a good movie, and another. Uh, long story, The Immortal Story, which is a powerful little story that uh, Orson Welles adapted pretty well, actually. So um, if you don't know Isaac Dennison, you got to know Isaac Dennison. Finally, uh, there's two finallys. One is um, William Trevor. What kind of idiot would not put William Trevor as their number one short story writer? I don't know. I, I have to put him in at least one of these episodes. I love his work. We've talked about Trevor. We've, we've got a running series on his novels which I don't know as well. I've picked two here to give you a, as a taster. One is his very first book, The Day We Got Drunk on Cake and Other Stories. Hard to kind of find because most of his books have been subsumed by these big best ofs and selected stories. And his last one, Last Stories. There's a big shift that make, you can sort of see go across his career. These early ones are much more technically... Uh, uh, I don't want to say... say they're not so obvious. They're much more... They look more like short stories <laughs> and the way they're written. And they're technically much sharper than a lot of the stories as he goes through his career. His late stories are almost like these impressionistic little brush strokes. And you think of those Japanese little brush strokes where they draw a flower with five or six lines. They're much less technically sharp. They're very emotional. They're very moving stories. And he doesn't play around as much as he does with his early book. I love this one because there's some actually some dark comic 
uh, stories in that and a couple of horror stories in there and, and at least one good ghost story. So, and his later stuff is almost almost always very realistic and he goes into the lives of so many different types of people. I'm always sh surprised. So that's that's the real top 10 list. I've I've done something horrible, which is I put myself at the top of the top 10 list simply so I could just say I have these books that I love that are called one's one called Greetings from Earth. One's called Hot Animal Love. These are the three short story collections I have that are, are kicking around. My book of stories about Dazzle Resplendent, which is about a dog who hates human beings. And what, what sensible dog would not hate human beings? And basically, um, I, I, I'm only qualifying them for this list simply because I'd like to get some of these out of the house. So if anyone wants to buy any of these, I'm going to put my email address down here. And if you pay, I think $7 is fair to ship it to you and all that stuff because I just got a box these. I'd like to get them out of the house. So I have paperbacks. I'll send them to you for seven bucks, if, including that'll include postage if you want any of those three books. And I like them. I personally, I, I read them all the time. You know, I like my stories. So we're going to do another one of these. I won't try not to self promote in the middle of it, but there's lots of good short story writers. There's more I haven't even gotten to. Some of my top number one short story writers are still, we haven't even whispered their names yet so we'll do another one of these soon um is there anything else exciting to tell you yes take stay safe as we, we we're really hoping you know, everybody will stay safe so they can keep watching these these useless videos and um join the international bathing alliance it's the it's the perfect time to join an alliance of international bathers who do nothing useful except read books in the bathtub and we'll put your name on a map and we'll send you a copy of the, a link to the map and it'll be an extraordinary uh, boost to your self-esteem. You'll feel so much better about yourself and, and everything else. Okay? So take care. Stay safe. Um, the, the, government, the, the political situ situation in, in America is just worse and worse every day. So just, you know, we'll cross our fingers and hope we get through all this. And happy bathing and happy, especially happy masturbating.